You came to this video for a solution. You know, man, you've been stressed. You've been frustrated. You're trying to figure out even where to start. Or even if you know where you kind of going at, you ain't really liking it, you know? So today, man, I'm gonna be taking you out through a journey, man. We're gonna be going through some of my old photos. I've never put any of my old photos up. I was a horrible photographer. But today, I'm gonna give y'all some tips. I'm gonna give y'all five tips on how to not become a horrible photographer. Check this out. So to be transparent, I've been shooting for about 10 years now. I've been shooting about six to seven professionally. I remember I initially started off shooting one of the homies who lived around my neighborhood back in like middle school because he was a rapper and he had a camera so he would have me shoot some of his visuals and we both was inexperienced like we didn't know what we was doing but we used to just take photos and post them on facebook like literally in that middle school period that was my first time touching a dslr and i was a rebel t3 i want to say a t3i and I had a Canon Elf 180 that I got from my godmom for Christmas. Like, I want to say that year before, I was just really experimenting around that time. And I remember my stepdad at the time, you know, at the time. My stepdad at the time, he was telling me how my photos looked dope, that I had a good eye, and that we should look in that best in me and a new camera. We never got to that because he got kicked to the curb, you know, my dudes. At that same time, um, it put me in another perspective like, okay, so somebody sees some quality in my work, somebody sees something. So that motivated me to even pursue that more and further. When I got through high school, I ended up investing into a camera. I think it was like the Canon 1300D. Like, and it was just so basic. Like, now that I would play with it, I gave it away to one of my homies, uh, one of my brothers, uh, his son. I gave it to one of my homies um, just so he could have something to start off with. I started off with the 1300D and I was doing YouTube videos at the time. So I was curating those and I started doing that and that started picking up towards college. I started doing grad photos at my high school and I would take photos of everybody and I wouldn't charge really nothing. I think I was charging like $40 an hour. At the time, I knew I wasn't as experienced. I knew I didn't have no crazy stuff, but I knew I had a decent eye. Eventually we ran through that and it worked out pretty smooth. So I'm gonna show you guys some old photos that I took back early on. So I wish I could show y'all really some older ones, what I took like on my Elf 180 or even even more earlier with my 1300D. But before we even get into this, man, make sure you guys subscribe if you are new. Make sure you drop a like below if you like this video so far. And hey, let's get straight to it. So man, we're gonna start off with some grad photos that I did back for some of the homies at my old high school. So. This photo, it was, it, it wasn't too bad. It was just the composition was so off. And then I got her grad cap cut off. So I was like, eh, like nowadays, one thing that I do prioritize a lot when it comes to creating is composition. And that's all about shaping your subject, but also to shaping your scene. So within that, I just threw all that out the book. Uh, I just really saturated the hell out the blues and uh, all the colors and everything so yeah it was a decent photo like i would say it would be decent for that time even like her skin looks red like on her leg her skin looks like super red like i would even correct that to make it look a little bit more true um but yeah man it's just like minor stuff but those things make or break your photo i could tell when i'm going down instagram or looking at different photos and something's a little off or something doesn't look aesthetically pleasing i'm just like uh, i ain't feeling that you know what i'm saying this other photo uh i had took when i was at georgia state and this one wasn't actually that bad we took it on a parking garage I see I kind of blewed up those blues again, you know what I'm saying? I really saturated those. Um, but this wasn't too bad. I think I had a bad way of using clarity though. I used to use clarity a lot in my photos, but to me, they kind of now give like this grungy rough look. And I don't really like it. I feel like it's ideal when your subject is very, very out of focus because it can add some slight detail and sharpness to it. But other than that, I don't really see no point in it, bro. Unless you want to also turn that clarity down and make something look a little softer. So I want to also go back to an event that I did. So I shot my baby cousin at the time, his uh, birthday party. So it was cool. Um, I don't think it was a horrible photo. I actually like 
uh what i got in the background but also to his composition he's not even centered in the middle of the frame like that's already a l but also too i don't know what editing i was doing on here but i put like some haze effect over it and yeah i don't i don't know man i ain't feeling that i really i think this is when i want to say i used snapseed to edit this photo um at the time and snapseed actually a little dope app but man i remember when i had edited this yeah because i see my cousin my cousin's in the back and then i got my baby cousin in the front uh eating the popsicle but it's a dope photo i mean it's cool i just wish his head wasn't cut off i wish i had him a little bit more centered i wish um and so then if i had him centered and then had my cousin in the background that can make a difference or if i wanted to step back further or get a smaller focal length so i can see what's around him or actually capture his whole head yeah next photo now this one i ain't gonna cap these was horrible photos so these are photos with my twin brother and i remember one i'm because like i remember when i was first really getting into photos and he would just ask me to take his photos all the time because you know <laughs> We some good looking brothers, you feel me? So I was taking some photos of him and we was kind of where, um, like it was the river walk out in Augusta. And I remember when I was editing these, I didn't like the way I edited them. Like I turned the tint uh, all the way to like the purple this side, like away from the green side. I definitely saturated the greens, but I changed the tint on them heavy. Um, I think I didn't like how they looked initially. So I tried to go for something like stylistic and yeah, it it, it really wasn't given, I'm sorry. Um, I do like the uh, foreground that I do got in the photo. I feel like that was something interesting that I played with back then with some foreground cause that's before I was even shooting videos and before I even took up film in college. So that uh, element was pretty cool because I was like, okay, I could see actually me having something that helped tell the story um, in the actual image. Even this other photo I got of him, trash. Like I got half of his hand cut off and he's so tight. I wish I was either further back or, um, I really wish I was further back so I can get like more of his waist, like a cut off side of his body. And I wanted to see the background a little bit more too, but didn't get that either, but it's all good, it's all good. Um, but also too, I threw this tent on here and it looks like I got a vignette on here too. So I would really just experiment with everything. But also too, that's also a good look that you are experimenting with each and everything. So you can kind of figure out what workflow works for you what editing style works for you you know and what kind of works with your style this is actually my first ever studio shoot i shot this back in 2017 at cam kirk studios y'all know the home you feel me so i shot it there and i actually learned studio shooting there as well so they was teaching me uh the different settings and also we still do that today which is dope um which i always admire because you know if you don't know what you're doing we can help you out with this initial shoot, it was definitely uh, nerve wracking because when I first hopped in, I was like, yo, this is very intimidating with all the lights and all this stuff. But it wasn't bad at all as soon as I got it set up. I know um, that the lighting actually doesn't look too crazy. I ain't gonna cap, like it actually doesn't look bad. Uh, the makeup though, like when I was trying to correct it in Lightroom later, like that's just horrible. Like y'all need to see, y'all need to see because I was just mushing shorty face around. <laughs> It really looked bad, but hey man, you like I said, you gotta start somewhere, bro. You gotta start somewhere, but nah. This photo right here is something that I did for a brand shoot, and I think that was one of my first brand shoots in Atlanta. I just really upped the clarity on this joint. Like, this motherfucker look rough. So, I, like I said, I am I was kinda doing that to kinda literally test stuff, like my first brand shoot, and we went to this place called Pullman's Yard in Atlanta. Now I think they curate events there monthly and stuff. It was abandoned at the time, so we was just walking through places and trying to find some pleasing places to shoot. At the time, I thought it was pretty clean, but now like I know that it was kind of a little rough. That was very like vibrant and it wasn't really as like it doesn't give more of that commercial clean feel. It wasn't really clean, so I know that's what uh, I like to aim for now in my brand shoots. <sighs> All right, so since we are away from the fire, bro, now we gotta get to these tips, man. So first of all, you wanna know, number one, how to maximize your area. So whether that's knowing how to set your scene, um, what is in your scene, what is around your subject, what can help enhance your subject in scene, but also to what focal length are you using, how tight are you going, how wide are you going, 
and also to composition shaping your scene kind of that same thing but also to what angles did you want to use right so i know nowadays since i've been taking more advantage shooting film rather than digital i definitely take my time in wondering what angles i want to use and what shots that i want to get because you may have a space that's not big enough for what you want to do and you want to use a certain lens you know so you definitely want to be able to know how to maximize your area so definitely keep that in mind when you are shooting or if you are planning to do a shoot where i'm shooting at and how can i use this area to my advantage another thing i want to talk to you guys about is shooting a variety of people make sure your muses are diverse whether it's black white asian latina dog cat anything man anything make sure you're just shooting anything and expanding your portfolio i guarantee you you will see a difference in growth but also too you'll be able to see more of a growth in your work shooting with different types of people shooting different skin complexions those can help you maximize your photography skills to a t and it also makes you learn and allows you to learn different mediums within your photos and learn different things about light and how light hits certain skin tones and even when it comes to skin retouching if you all into that into editing you'll be able to play with those mediums and be like okay so this is what works with this skin complexion so you will have an idea when it comes to working with certain clients and clientele it's definitely a stigma out there in the creative community that some people shoot specifically certain people i know when i first started shooting photography i was only shooting black women for real and i was like i need to expand my palette and then i started shooting men and i was like i need to expand my palette more then i started hitting up some of my white homies started shooting them and then when i went to college i started shooting even more diverse people so you definitely want to be able to use your environment that's around you it was perfect at georgia state because it's people from all walks of life that go there. So I was able to really take that to my advantage. Also, I was serious about that dog and cat. Make sure you shoot that dog and cat. Another thing that I feel like that hinders a lot of creatives today, man, make sure you are asking questions, bro. And I mean this to, <laughs> I mean this to the bare minimum. Like if you don't think you know something or you have a question or it's just not 100%, ask a question bro i've seen this a couple times in the studio where i would work with a photographer on their side and while they're working with their client i ask them questions to see if they need help and they'll say they don't but then they'll blow up their whole shoot and i mean by this because man time is important bro make sure you're using your time wisely so i want to be able to put an emphasis on make sure you ask questions bro and if you don't know something ask the question and it's okay bro i feel like we've maneuver to a space where nowadays in the creative community people be feeling as if asking questions make you look bad asking questions make you look dumb or it just makes you feel like you're hurting or a pain to somebody when that's not even the case man which isn't the case if you want an impactful creative community i definitely believe in helping each other the best way you can especially if it's just free like i can't tell you how many times i've done free photo shoots i've done some free bts like it's okay to ask questions and do stuff for other people and help people out but because that's free like that's one thing like asking a question and giving an answer that's a free thing number four and this is something that's very very important and what i've learned from cinematography is storyboard storyboard for your photos man like i can't tell you how many times i came into the studio and we would have photographers who would start off and don't know what they're doing they don't know what backdrop color they want to use or they don't know how their client is dressing they don't know what they're going for they just kind of freestyling it which is cool if you got some free time and free money to spend you know hey i'm telling you if you want to be effective at your shoot you want to prepare and a mood board is dope i write mood boards for all my shoots whether it's me directing something whether it's me photographing or videoing anything i would do a mood board for it so i'm always having something to trace back to you can storyboard on pinterest you can storyboard on mylanote you can storyboard on you know what i mean like you can find different ways to storyboard you know some people create treatments i usually do that more so when it's something that's geared towards cinematography that takes a little bit more time but with photos i'm mainly surfacing that around a mood board a series of photos and maybe videos if i need that and those will be able to compliment and definitely explain where i'm going and my inspo and this leads me to my last step get freaky with it man no pause like 
Like, dead ass, bro, get freaky with it. The thing is, bro, you gotta be innovative with your work. You can have so much inspo, but you don't wanna copy the same exact thing. You don't wanna do the same exact look. Definitely wanna add your own style, your own flavor to it. So always try to embody that when you are creating. See what you like, you like, okay, I like this shot, I like how this line look. But what if I put like my favorite color on there? Or let me see what she likes or he likes whenever I'm shooting. You know, try to do different things or even if it's amongst what they're wearing, you know, definitely just add some sort of flavor to it so you're not doing the same exact thing. I see so many people jocking other people's styles and I'm getting tired of it. And I'm seeing so many people doing the same stuff and it's so saturated, like, it gets boring looking at that stuff, bro. Like, I can't tell you how many times I go through Instagram just scrolling, and then I'm pausing like, ah, but I'm seeing the same stuff. Like, nah, bro, make sure you're adding some flavor to your photo, adding some personality that comes from you, that stems from you, that makes you original. With that being said, I appreciate y'all for tuning in today's video. If you are new, man, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Welcome, welcome. If you like this video, please hit the like button below and also comment below if you enjoyed this video and if you like any other videos like this, man. I appreciate y'all and don't forget, man, keep shooting. Peace.